Hello everyone. Welcome back to Elevate in Spirit. Today, I'm going to start a brand new series talking about the power of imagination. I've ministered on this a few times and this is one of the most important things that the Lord has ever spoken to me. Of course, that's hard to say because everything that God speaks to you is important. But as far as making a difference in my life and ministry and the things that were happening, this was just a game changer. It totally changed my life. According to the dictionary, imagination is the power to see things inside yourself that aren't real or present at that moment. You use your imagination all the time, whether you're aware of it or not. You can't live without one. You can't remember anything without an imagination. I was looking at Hebrews 11.1, 1, which says that, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the proof of things not seen. That made me reflect on everything, and I spent a lot of time remembering the good things God has done in my life. As I thought about the memories that meant the most to me, I realized that I could picture them, see exactly when they happened, and remember them exactly as they are. Did you know that's how you remember things? In 1 Chronicles 29 verse 18 says, Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. This verse is a prayer that King David said when materials were given to start building the temple. David recognizes that God had a part in the lives of their ancestors and asks God to keep the people's hopes and dreams alive so that they will always be loyal to him. From this, we can see that David knew how important it was for his people to stay devoted to God. In other words, you can remember things by using your imagination. A lot of people didn't grow up in one place. They may have moved around a lot, which is why you don't just remember one place where you grew up. I only said these things to let you know that when I talk about imagination, some people may not understand. They think that's ridiculous. I'm working with the real world. I'm not going to sit here and make something up. Well, I'm not talking about fantasy. I'm talking about your heart's ability to see something that you can't remember, think, or do without an imagination. So there is a good way to use your imagination. In fact, I'm going to explain some things here. The word vision comes from Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. The American Heritage Dictionary says that vision refers to a mental image that is made by the imagination. Let me give you an example. If you're in the middle of the country in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you wanna get from Tulsa to Los Angeles, did you know that you need to have a clear idea of where you want to go? That means that you have fewer options. You could leave Tulsa and head east, but I'm sure you'll never get to Los Angeles that way. You have to go west, and not just west. You also have to go a little south. This would narrow your options, and this is what it means when there is no vision. Anyone can get where they want to go if they don't know where they're going. This means that you can go in any direction. Sadly, this describes the vast majority of people. They don't have a vision or a clear idea of what they want to achieve. Instead, they are more like water that flows to the lowest level. It may not bless you or make some people frustrated to hear that, but you need to hear it because you're the only one who can change the direction of your life. If you're waiting for God to move you like a chest piece and think that everything will work out on its own, You'll never get anywhere. Everything I see in the Bible and everything God has done in my life has required me to have a vision and a purpose. Although it is God's will that everyone be saved, it doesn't always happen. Jesus said that more people would enter through the wide gate to death than through the narrow gate to eternal life. In John 3 verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's God's will, but it doesn't just happen. You have to work for it. Get a vision or use other words, but you have to see that it's God's will for you to be saved. 
You have to believe that Jesus died for your sins and healed you, and you have to go after it. If you don't take it, you have to reach out and grab it. You have to seek salvation. It doesn't just happen to you. God says you think that God moves in your life in some way and makes things happen, and that God makes things happen in your life without you having to do anything. This is not what the Bible says. Mark 7.13 says, Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. In this verse, Jesus says that the religious leaders of his time were wrong to put their own traditions ahead of God's rules. He says that by carefully following their own rules and traditions, they are ignoring God's word. Jesus explains how important it is to follow God's rules instead of traditions made by mankind. Going back to my own life, I've always thought that God had a plan for me, even though I didn't know what that plan was. He taught me that when I was very young, and I found a Bible verse over the Christmas break of my first term of college in 1967. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And in the last sentence of the second line, it says, you will prove. To prove something means to make it clear to your senses what God's good, acceptable, and perfect will is. This verse tells believers to live in a way that changes them. It starts by stressing how important it is to see God's mercy as the basis for our reaction. Because of this kindness, Christians are told to give everything they have to God, not just rituals or actions that people see, but every aspect of their lives. All of that is to say that I've known my whole life that God had something for me, but it was hard to pin down until I had this experience with the Lord. There was no way I could be sure of what it would be until I met God. From that point on, I didn't know the specifics, but I did know that I would spend the rest of my life trying to honor God and show who God was. This is why I've been talking about these things. Using your imagination to see something having a vision inside you. Thank you for joining us on this journey of the power of imagination, and if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. As always, may your journey be filled with the abundant blessings of God. Until next time, thanks for watching. From Elevate in Spirit.